welcome back for your 15-minute daily inspiration. Y'all know I love you, and I'm so glad that you are here. If you have not already taken a moment to share, to like this, make sure that you do that right now. Give me some hearts right now. Give me some thumbs up right now. I want to make sure that you are with me. Listen, I am always so thrilled that you are here. You know how to stay in contact with me. You can follow me on Ms. Carrie Baby. I'm Pastor Carrie, pastor of Emerging Generations here at New Birth, pastor by none other than Dr. Jamal H. Bryant. Listen, we are thrilled that you're here. If you've not downloaded the New Birth app, you know I'm going to tell you to do that. This is the perfect time to do so. I want to jump right into our daily inspiration today. I have been praying for you. I've been praying for myself, and the Lord has really been walking me through this topic, and it is a tough one. Do you hear me? Today, I want to talk about fierce forgiveness, and the topic of our inspiration today is is so simple. It's simply let it go. Listen, forgiveness can be one of the most challenging principles for any human to follow, particularly those of us who are deeply emotional, who are deeply sensitive, those of us who love with such fervor and tenacity. We love with everything in our being. When our love, our support, or our kindness is abused or taken for granted by others, it creates or it can create a level of resentment which causes us to potentially harbor unforgiveness and not just unforgiveness, but a desire for vengeance. In life, there will always be opportunities for you to hear this, forgive and to be forgiven. What is interesting about the practice of forgiveness is that it's always easy to expect it, but we fight relentlessly when it's actually time for us to extend it. Each day we enter a process of forgiving and being forgiven. When you, think, you, when you think about it, you would think that it was an easy process, but ultimately it really just isn't. We are all imperfect creatures. No matter how great we believe we are, I know that you're great. I believe that I'm great. But can I tell you this? We are still, even in all of our goodness, we are still imperfect. Each day we are engaged in something that requires us to seek forgiveness from the Father. We think wrong. We speak wrong. Some of us act negatively. We do things that require us to have to petition petition the Holy Sovereign God, a forgiving and loyal God seeking for forgiveness. Because of this, every prayer uttered should remind us of our own humanity our own humanity. What's interesting is, despite having these daily encounters with God, knowing how much we need his forgiveness, why do we so quickly forget how important it is to forgive others? Ooh, I'm talking to myself. We forget because for many of us, we lack humility. Humility is freedom from pride or arrogance. It is being a person that's down to earth. It is lowliness. It is meekness. Humility is understanding how forgiveness works. And not just that, but it's having gratitude for access to forgiveness. Humility keeps you grounded and it keeps you grateful. I believe that it keeps you sensitive. It keeps you understanding and it keeps you compassionate to other people. It causes you to give others, hear this, the benefit of the doubt, not because they always deserve it, not because they're perfect, not because they've done everything right, but we give them the benefit of the doubt because we always want it and we don't always deserve it. While humility is mindful and compassionate, pride, on the other hand, is led by arrogance. It is self-righteousness. It is ego. Typically, unforgiveness is rooted in pride. Pride is the complete opposite of humility. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 16 and 18, it says pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit and a haughty spirit before a fall. Listen, pride will always cause you to have amnesia. Pride will cause you to forget that you must give that in which you wish to receive. Pride, when unchecked, can turn into anger, and anger can then turn into revenge. Proverbs 13 and 10 says, where there is strife, there is pride. Hear this. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Listen, revenge loves anger. Revenge loves frustration. 
because ultimately revenge loves control and revenge is drunk on power. Revenge loves the ability to make another person suffer, hear this, or hold them emotionally hostage to whatever it is that they've done. Revenge, unlike love, keeps a record. Why? Because revenge will always allow you to feel empowered to force people to hurt in the way that they hurt you. Revenge makes you want to prolong your anger. Revenge makes you want to make sure that they feel discomfort, that they feel pain. Revenge wants them to wallow in the pain that they caused you. Revenge wants to create a constant reminder to them of how they failed you, of how they disappointed you, and how they let you down. Through the eyes of revenge, forgiveness just seems to let people off the hook just too easily. Forgiveness is just too simple. Through the eyes of forgiveness, it just seems too unfair to have gone through all of the pain, all of the suffering, all of the hurt that they may have caused you. They legitimately caused you pain. And, and what re revenge does is it makes us want to not extend forgiveness, but it makes us want to not allow someone to be completely exonerated of all their charges. Revenge wants them to get all the charges. We don't want them ever to be clear of the charges. Revenge wants them to answer to the charges forever, not for a temporary period of time. This is why for some of us, when people have done you wrong and they may have even apologized to you, you keep throwing it in their face. You keep telling them what they did. Now listen, you have your process where you have to walk it out and I agree with that, but when you forgive, you have to let it go. Revenge wants them to constantly face the death penalty. Every time you see them, you bring up what they've done wrong to you. Every time you see them, you make them remember the pain that they've caused you. But listen, as believers, we should be reminded, hallelujah, that all of the charges were already dismissed at Calvary. The Bible tells us in Romans 12 and 19, it says, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Listen, and let God do what God does. Let God handle the case for you. Listen, in 1 Peter 3 and 9, it says, do not repay evil for evil, reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless, for to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. Listen, we've got to understand that as mad as we are, as angry as we are, as wrong as they were for doing what they did, we have to remember that vengeance belongs to the Lord. When we seek vengeance out of our own accord, we step outside of our role as sons and daughters of God, and we step out of the will and the protection of God because we are now being rebellious and doing what we want to do because we take matters into our own hands because we don't want to wait for the Father to avenge us. Listen, there is nothing you can do. Can I tell you, in all of my years on the earth, this is the one thing that I know, that there is nothing that you can do to your enemies uh, that is better than anything that the Lord has planned for them. There is nothing that you can do to them that God, listen, God already has that thing covered. This is why he tells us, that's why we've got to pray for our enemies. The Bible says in Luke 6 and 27, it says, but I say to you who hear love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. It is a difficult thing to do. I don't care if you have been saved your whole life, if you came out of the womb your whole life. Listen, loving your enemy and doing good to people who you know hate you, doing good to people who you know just talked about you, doing good to people who you know always have something negative say about, to say about you, doing good to people who you know keep up mess around you. Listen, Listen, when you, we're human and it is difficult to sometimes love people who cause us hurt and who cause us pain. But can I tell you this, like I had to remind myself this week, we are called to 
forgive. Listen, forgiveness is simple. It is to cease from feeling resentment against an offender. Forgiveness is creating a pardon or a claim. It's providing a requital. This is what we have to do as believers. We are called to forgive because we have to let that thing go. Ephesians 4 and 32 says, and be kind to one another tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ, hear this, forgave you. Matthew 18, 21 through 22 says, then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? How many times he gonna keep treating me bad and I have to forgive him? And the Lord answered and said, as many as, se-, he said, as many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but I say 70 times seven. So listen, you have to constantly, constantly be in a space of forgiving those who treat you poorly. I know it is not comfortable, but it is what we are called to do as believers. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6 and 15, it says, but if you do not hear this, forgive others their trespasses, then neither will your father forgive you of your trespasses. That is a very serious thing because for many of us, so much of of our life is tied up into other people and the fact that they have wronged us and we have never taken the time to let it go. We've never taken the time to truly, truly forgive because can I tell you this? We can say we forgive with our mouths, but the true test of forgiveness is when that person walks into a space, how do you really feel about them? Can you truly be kind to them? Not just in lip service, but with your whole heart, knowing everything that they've done to you. How do you feel? How do you treat them? Can you still display the love of Christ? I can't even tell you the number of times that I have felt like I was done wrong or I have done people wrong. I might have been hurtful to someone. And listen, I wanted forgiveness, but I I created difficulty in forgiving other people and our lives just don't work like that. Listen, I know God in all of his wisdom knew if we don't forgive others, he had to tell us, listen, I'm not gonna forgive you because many of us, will be walking around here all of our lives in bondage because we choose not to forgive. Listen, you can let go of vengeance and apply forgiveness when you remember these few things. Number one, God is sovereign. Listen, that means that God sees and knows, hallelujah, all things. The Bible says in Proverbs 15 and three, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. What does that mean? God saw what you could not see. God heard what you could not hear. Listen, God knew exactly how that thing went down. He knew who did what and how they did it. Your job is to let God do what he has to do. That goes into number two. You've got to trust God. You've got to trust that God will have an encounter with your enemies. Hear this, not on your terms, but on his terms. I'm so grateful that the Lord has not dealt with me in ways that I have wanted him to deal with my enemies. Listen, there are things that we might have have done where the Lord have extended us grace and the same way that he extends us grace, he is going to extend our enemies grace too. We cannot control how the Lord repays them for what they've done for us. We have to pray and trust that God will do it. Listen, as sons and daughters of God, we don't have to protect ourselves. That, that makes me feel good. That makes me feel happy and secure. I don't have to fight my own battles for the battles are already won. Listen, God has already fought them for me. As a son, as a daughter, we don't have to run around policing what people do. We can give it to God and allow God to be father in our life. Number three, you've got to practice forgiveness every day, huh? You, you've got to make sure that forgiveness becomes a part of your life. Listen, not just forgiving other people. Some of us don't even know how to forgive ourselves. One of the greatest gifts that I have really been imparting in my own life is to learn to forgive forgive myself and to forgive myself swiftly. Just as fast as I practice forgiving other people, I also have to forgive myself. This is a daily practice. Listen, there is a level of vulnerability. There is a level of, uh, a level of nakedness that we feel when we forgive. Uh, we come directly uh, in contact with our humanity because we feel like forgive- forgiveness leaves us open. But I want you to know that it doesn't leave you open. The Father still covers
offers you, the Father is still with you. Listen, that is why he tells us we can come to him, we can trust in him, we can depend on him and we can rely on him. Forgiveness has to be a daily discipline. Make that just like you are working out every day, just like you know you are doing other things that help you discipline your life, you've got to make sure that forgiveness is a part of that. Number four, listen, ultimately forgiveness, it sets you free. Forgiveness is not simply about other people. It is about, listen, it is about how you manage, about how you discipline yourself. Because I have always said, I don't believe that God punishes us on what people, uh, looks at us on, on what people do to us, but God looks at us on how we respond to what they do. God is looking at our response, no matter how hard, no matter how difficult, because people can do some real grimy things. They can do some real hurtful things, but God is looking at how do we respond to people that have hurt us. You ultimately have to let it go. Sometimes you've got to learn to bring yourself closure. For some of us, we are tied up in unforgiveness because we are waiting for people to apologize. We are waiting for people to give us closure. You've got to give yourself closure. You've got to release it on your own. Why? Because your healing can only begin when, when you give yourself closure. You've got to begin to walk through that process, knowing that it takes time. It takes time for you to dig through some of the things that people have done, but it is a part of what you have to do. Forgiveness restores your power. It takes power away from other people. For some of us, we have no power because we've given it to everybody. Everybody that we're upset with, you know, creates a level of discomfort for us. We are powerless walking around here uh, with nothing to give, no control of our hearts, no control over our minds, and that's not who the Lord has called us to be. We are called, listen, peace of mind is our portion. We're supposed to have peace of mind. We're not supposed to be up late at night worried about uh, unforgiveness and harboring resentment and bitterness. Listen, you've got to let it go so that the peace of God can be with you, so that the peace of God will carry you. Ultimately, I've learned that forgiveness is a teacher. It will teach you not so much about other people, but it'll teach you about yourself, who you are at your core, and if you really believe what you say you believe, if you can really love the way you say you love. Listen, the Bible tells us in Leviticus 19 and 18, it says, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor, hear this, as yourself. It says, I am the Lord. Listen, today I know it was tough because it was tough for me to have to study it and walk through it with you. I know that it can be a challenge, but you know what? God has already equipped you. You already have every single thing you need to make forgiveness a daily practice in your life so that you can be set free. Listen, I am so tired of cutting off my own blessings because I can't let things go, because I can't forgive people. There are many beautiful things that the Father has for you. There is a release that God wants to give you even now. If you can just simply let it go, give it to God, and walk in a spirit of forgiveness. I love you as always. I'm praying for you. I really truly am. And I pray that you are praying for me. I declare that forgiveness will be, listen, what you do, it will be who you are. You will leave the enemy dumbfounded because people will do things and forgiveness will be your immediate response. It will be how you handle things. It will be the posture of your heart so that the Lord will hear your prayers and that they are not hindered. Listen, have a wonderful, fantastic, listen, day where you are focused on forgiveness. We love you here at New Birth. On behalf of our pastor again, Dr. Jamal H. Bryant, listen, come back and visit us again on our 15-minute daily devotionals. If you want to sow below, you can do that right now. You have all of the information. I Y'all know that I know that this is good ground, and I wouldn't tell you anything that was not true. If you want to join and become a part of this ministry, you can do it right now at newbirth.org. Love y'all. 